So good night to you. Yeah, that's so we're gonna get going. And yeah, yeah. Just tell your neighbor, have faith in God. Yeah, just help me preach tonight. Just tell them. Watch them and tell them. Tell them, have faith in God. For every situation in your life. Just tell them there's no situation that God cannot handle. So have faith in God. I just come in a little closer here for a second. You look like one of your daughters tonight, you know. <laughs> I told, you know, it's like, you know, I, t- I thought they came without their mom tonight, no, you know. But tonight is your night. <laughs> Kid, is that glasses? Something is different. Yeah, style or something. But you look like one of them tonight, you know. So, yeah, have faith in God. I want to start um, with Philippians chapter 4, <coughs> verse 19. Mark, how are you going? You all right? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. I want to start right there. and I'll take it from the King James Version. How about that? King James Version, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Here it says, and, But my God shall what? Supply all your need according to what? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why don't you confess that with me? Say, my God... Shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Now, can I ask you a question? Um, if, your, if your need is, if God is not supplying your need, what does that tell you? you somebody's saying, maybe, maybe you don't what? Need it. You know, so some of us have been praying and saying, God, where's my wife? <laughs> you know, where's my husband? Maybe you don't need it right now, right? And therefore, God is not what? Supplying it, right? And, you know, because he said, my God will supply all my needs. He didn't say, my puppet will supply all my needs, you know? And sometimes we think God's a puppet. We can, pu- you know, it, some people think God is a great puppet in the sky, and they're trying to figure out how to pull his strings, you know what I mean? You know, people in deals, and especially in Trinidad and Tobago, you know, if you, if you go, if you want anything in Trinidad and Tobago, you know, anything you want, you know, you have to have somewhat strings, you know? And we tell each other that. We say, you know, I'm trying to get something done in the license office. You have any strings I could pull? You know, the other day my wife and I was trying to get our passports and we were looking to pull some strings, you know. And, you know, there are times when you try to pull some strings when it pulls back. That's when it gets really serious, right? But now, so we are so accustomed pulling strings that we think, now, when I want something from God, I'm trying to figure out how to what? Pull his strings. And sometimes we think if we come to church, we can pull God's strings, you know. So I came to church and I gave money and I read the Bible and I was so kind this week that I think I did enough to pull God's what? Strings. And God is just telling you, but God is not your puppet. Right? Just telling you about that. And, and God is not your puppet. And I was going to say, you know, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick on Angelia and her husband. I won't do that. You know? <laughs> hey, you know, you just want to pick on them because they just got married. Now. You know, you're, you're happy for them. You know? So, so we know that our God shall supply all our needs. And I want you to, and, and the message I'm talking about tonight, I want you to listen to it carefully. Because I believe every word and statement in the message is of significance. And it is important. And so we started off the message tonight by saying, your God. Can you give me it in the New Living Translation? How about that? The New Living Translation, how about that? Come on. It says, and this same God, the Apostle Paul, who's, he's saying, who takes care of me, will take care of what? All your needs. And so God will meet all your needs. And so you have to tap into the supply. You have to look to God. And so if you're not getting your needs met, sometimes it's because we're looking to the wrong what? Supply. You know, we're turning to the wrong supply. Or sometimes it's something that we think we need, but we don't really what? Need. And so we made a prophetic declaration this year. 
I think we made it as early, if, if I'm right, Oniki, you tell me. I think we made it as of early as January this year that we declared, and I believe it's significant, that this year you will have more money than you had last year. And we declared it when it seemed like the economy and the price of oil and everyone was saying it's going to be a tough year financially. We prophesied and we made a declaration that if you believed in it, you know, if you said, you know what, I received that, that you will have more money this year than you did last year. And could you give Jesus a hand of praise? You know, I just think that is so awesome because this year, the kind of things we heard this year, we heard, I went out to dinner on Sunday, and I heard about somebody whose salary almost doubled. And then I heard about another gentleman whose salary tripled. Now, how many of y'all like your salary? All y'all work for something right now? How many of y'all like your salary to triple? Wouldn't that be great if your salary tripled? Yeah, yeah? Then I heard about somebody who their salary quadrupled. And then we said bye-bye to someone whose salary fifth tripled. What's the word? <laughs> Fippled. What is the word? I don't know what's the word. For five times is what? Quin, quin, quintupled? Yeah? Yeah, we can, we can coin an expression. Five tupled. <laughs> you know? And that is right in here. That is right. Watch me. That happened right inside here. For me, it was easy. Because, see, now I didn't get no money last year. Anything I got this year, <laughs> anything I got this year was more than last year. So I, I quadrupled, quadrupled, zippled. I did all the, you know, all the pearls happened to me this year. I found the pearl of great price. And even Celeste started off the year with a bang. You know, she started off the year, boom. She doubled or something like that. She started the year, boom. And as the year went on, she got knocked back. Boom. You know? She started off with great expectations and she got knocked back. But when she got knocked down, you know what she did? She picked up herself and believed again. And she said, I'm not going back where I come from. <laughs> Just telling you, I'm not going back to where I come from. She said, I'm only going up. And she believed God. Now, I have good news for you guys who said, you know what? I heard about our word later. Though. <laughs> you know, it didn't really happen for me. You know, you know? This year, it was worse for me. Hey, the year is not finished. Right? You could still believe God. And it's important. It is important. And as I get into the message today, you'll see why it's important. Give me Psalm chapter 75, verse 5. Psalm chapter 75, verse 5. Here it says, I'll take it from the King James. Psalm 75, verse 5. Now, hear what it says. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a what? Stiff neck. Just tell your neighbor, stop blowing your horn. You know, the, the, the Bible tells us, lift not up our horn. You know, and this is special in the workplace. You know, in the workplace, somebody does you something wrong, and we have to hear your horn, Right? Your mouth is going and they can't take advantage of me in this job. And, you know, how many of y'all has you've been done an injustice in your workplace? If that's ever happened to you, just wave your hand. Somebody, you know, and that's happened to a lot of us. And we often take the wrong approach when that happens. We go on what? Gossip, right? You go and find your best friend and say, this is what they did me. And then you go and find somebody else in the lunchroom and you say, this is what they did me. And you go and run amok and say, this is what happened on my job. And so the Bible is telling us, lift not your horn on high. Do not speak out of your own righteousness. Or do not speak out of stiff-neckedness or your own pride. God is saying to humble yourself, right? Even in your job, when they take advantage of you in your job. Because there's good news. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. For promotion does not come from Arima or Port of Spain or San Fernando. Promotion doesn't come with the wind. Promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, 
the South. Promotion doesn't just pop up in the air. He's saying promotion in your life does not come from the East, from the West, from the North, from the South. Look at the next verse. For God is the what? Judge. So you have to be very careful in life who you're pleading your case with. You have to be very careful who you're lifting up your horn to. That something has happened to you in your job and you go and plead your case everywhere and you go and make noise everywhere and you don't plead your case to God in prayer. So something has happened in your job, you just go to Jesus and say, Jesus, you see how they're taking advantage of me. I'm working hard and they're lying and they give me more work and then they bad talk me and they pay me less than the people. And Jesus, I just want to let you know God. And you bring it to Jesus. And hear what he says. God is the judge. He puts down what? One and does what? Sets up another. We'll stay out of the elections, right? So he puts down one and does what? Sets up another. Why don't you confess that over your life? Say in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive promotion in my life because God is my judge and I deserve what Jesus deserves. You see, when you begin to lift up your horn, you step into self-righteousness. When you begin to declare your case and your rights and what you deserve. You see, when you begin to declare what you deserve, you'll get what you deserve. You see, and I don't want what I deserve. Because all the complaining on the job. But when you sleep in 8 o'clock and reach in the work for 9. And the job starts in at 8. And when you reach your work, you're on Facebook. And you're on Facebook throughout the job, right? You're like, you're, especially here in Champion, right? You know, nobody works in Champion, right? At 10, at 11, at 12, at 1. You say, hello on Facebook. And they, oh, I wouldn't call names, right? Because the message could be recorded. So I wouldn't call names. But you... Know yourself, right? <laughs> you know yourself. And some of us, you know, are specialists at, and, and so something happened bad, they take $5 out of your salary. You never take $5 out of a Trini salary. <laughs> do not ever do that. And your horn, watch me, you running around singing in the workplace, blow the trumpet inside. <laughs> you know, you make a noise and all that kind of stuff. But listen to me. When you lift up your horn, you step into self-righteousness. And do you really want what you deserve? Or do you want what Jesus deserved? Jesus gave up his rights so that you can get his rights. Jesus did not deserve to be beaten, slapped, and crucified. But he was crucified so that you don't have to pick up your rights. But you can put and plead your case before God. So I want to speak something over our lives because I think it's going to be significant. Whoever you are, wherever you are here, I want to declare promotion over your life. I want to declare supernatural abundance, supernatural increase in finances. I want to declare unexplainable promotions on your job, just happening out of the blue. In fact, one guy went from a few thousand dollars to like 20,000. Just went to 20,000. He said, he said, this is incredible. He said, I just prayed a few days ago, and I said, Jesus, this is nonsense. I barely have enough money at the end of the month. And a few days later, one of the richest people in Trinidad and Tobago gave him a call and said, I want you to come work for me. And he's in the job, and he's lying, with the, going to the meeting. And you know, he's working for his pittance now. So the guy said, how much do you really want? How much do you want? 20,000 20, work? 25? He said, well, he said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so he take his big money. He take his big money, he start the job first week or second week or whatever. You know what happened? Other big people start to call him. And they all raising the stakes. <coughs> raising the stakes. Do you, you all know that we have gotten a home in Cayman. You all know that, right? We all, Catherine, we want to say goodnight to you. We miss you. We, Catherine has gone to the Cayman Islands. And most likely she's watching the stream right now. She's gone. And I just want to let you all know, she's making enough money to take care of you. You just need to get there. Just jump on a plane and get there. And get your cell number as you're reaching the airport. Say, Catherine, I'm here. And 
she's renting a two bedroom so that when you come, so you all are invited, right? <laughs> Everybody here, you can go. She, she went to some multiples. And so I want to declare over your life, if you can receive it. Some of us can't receive it because we are custom working hard. We custom working for what we want. Because some of us cannot receive favor and grace and love and God's kindness. For those of you who can, I want to declare supernatural, unexplainable abundance, supernatural, unexplainable promotion that comes from the Lord. The reason is you're going to need it. Now, give me this verse in the Bible. Give me Proverbs 22, verse 3. Proverbs 22, verse 3. Hear what the Bible says. Proverbs 22, verse 3. Hear what the Bible says. Give me it in the, how about the New Living Translation? I'll take it there. New Living Translation. Give me it from that translation. Here it says, a prudent person foresees what? Danger. And takes what? Precautions. But a simpleton, just ask your neighbor, say, are you a simpleton? <laughs> I hope you are not, right? A simpleton, right? Goes blindly on and suffers what? The consequences. And I want to let you know, we're in a season where you're going to have to be like Joseph. And that is why, for God's people, a word has declared at the beginning of 2015, unexplainable, supernatural financial increase that you may have wisdom that you may prepare for what is to come. And so God is doing something. You remember there was a prophet by the name of Agabus who rose up and he prophesied to God's people. And he told them a famine was about to hit all Roman provinces. And all of God's people believed God's word. And when the famine hit, they survived. And they had enough to send to others. And so I want to let you know that there is supernatural increase and abundance that you may take what? Precaution. For danger is coming. And the Bible says a wise man foresees danger, takes precaution, but the simpletons, it just happens.